questions. All right, so let's start section 3.3 .3 on uh, slope. And then after we finish this section, I'll give you time to work on uh, problems. If you have questions, say about the test or about the homework or anything you have questions about, I can help you with that. Did somebody come in since we know that you're going to test we know R? Is it right? Mm -hmm. R? Okay. Hi. And then section 3.3. <laughs> big ideas first. I like to start with the big ideas. So what is slope? Um, a couple different ways to think about it. The biggest thing is slope is a measure of steepness. That's the most important way to probably think about it. A lot of ways to think about this. Okay, you can see this um, in the real world. Uh, roofing and highways use this terminology. You can see it on road signs. So an example is on a highway sign, you might see something that's a six percent grade. And that's important to tell trucks, you know, if they know it's really steep, uh, going uphill or downhill, especially downhill, they need to apply their brakes liberally and protect them so their brakes don't get too hot, so smoking or overheating. So a 6% grade means literally, I mean, what 6% mean? 6% means 6 per 100. So a 6 per 100 grade means a slope of 6 over 100. So what that means is, any unit of measure you use for six, six yards, six feet, six inches, you go over 100, and that's the steepness of that hill, right? And I actually saw that sign a few months ago. It's pretty common. So for every 100 feet you go over, you go up six feet. For every six miles you go over, or 100 miles you go over, you go up six miles. So that's what slope is. It's probably the most important thing. Um, another big picture thing to know right away is positive negative slope. And this is a big like double check at the end of a problem. Anytime I say graph a line, at the end I mentally go picture that's positive, equation positive, right? Good. That's one of those like reasonableness checks at the end of a physics question. If they're like, I'm pouring water into a bucket, how long should it take to fill? And if you get your answer as 12 million hours, you're like, wow, that's probably unreasonable. Right? Same thing at the end of a problem. Always check the positive or negative slope because it's a really visual, easy check. And that is from left to right, always from left to right. Uphill slope is positive, going from left to right, downhill slope. And we'll see why in a second. So this is positive, this is negative. Okay, and that's a really easy check at the end of a problem when I say graph this equation or graph a line with the slope of negative two, if your line is going up, at the end of the problem you go, whoa, 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 I made a mistake. And I catch that. When I'm doing an answer key for you guys, at the end of a problem I'll look back and be like, wait a second, that was supposed to be a negative slope, and mine's going to fill, and I'll go up, 
I dropped a negative sign. On this test, when I made when I corrected uh, test number one for you guys, I did make a negative mistake. Luckily, I caught it on the first person's test I created before I marked them wrong. I was like, wait a second. I think I remember there being a negative. Okay, so it happened. <clears throat> All right, and then the biggest is it's rise over run. Okay. Rise over run, where the positive and negative signs really matter. And that's what we're going to be talking about, go up three. And instead of saying over two, say up three, right two. Down three, right two. Down three, left two. Okay. So a quick example of that would be... A slope of one half would mean... And what will we do with that 1 over 2? Right, what would that mean? Rise of positive 1 would mean? What direction? <coughs> Up 1. And run of positive 2 would mean? To the right, it's not saying over. The problem is people say up one over two, and that's where a lot of mistakes come from, that negative sign being dropped. And then notice also, and this is kind of an important thing to notice, one half is equal to positive one over positive two, but it's also equal to Another way to write that with other signs. Put some negatives in there. Yeah, where both are negative, right? And that's important. That's important to understand. Okay, a positive one over a positive two is equal to a negative one over a negative two. For sure, on a test. I will give you a problem where your point is like right here at the tippy tip top, and I'll say, ah, graph a slope of one half. And I'll purposely make it so you can't go up one and over two, that that would be off the graph. So you need to be able to say, hey, wait a second, going up one and right two is the exact same as going down one and left two. And we can see that right over here on this graph. Going, I'll draw it right below actually. So if we start at a point and we go up one, right two, up one, right two, that's the same thing as going down one, left two, down one, left two. It still makes a straight line, regardless of whether you went this direction, or whether you went this direction from that starting point. Okay, and that's if the beauty of math, it doesn't matter forwards, backwards, up, left, down. As long as you don't add an extra negative sign or take one out, it's the same line going right, it's the same line going left. Okay? All right. Perfect. So, we got a couple examples then. Let's start with an example in the book. First thing it's going to have you do is find the slope. So let's start with the problem. Like number. Oh, I could do some action here. Let's do some document camera. Use some technology. It's like more work than it's worth. No, it's worth it. Hello. 
this way. Turn on this one over here. and I'll, I'll do it on this one up here. So just so in case anybody ever wants to. There we go. In case anybody ever watches my YouTube videos on YouTube. I'm pretty, I'm getting better at what am I. It took so long at the beginning because I didn't know how to use iMovie and I didn't know how to, you know, just cut and splice and add and everything. But I figured it out. Now I'm like catching up. I have, I put 3.1 up where it's uploading this morning. So that's pretty good. We're on 3.3, 3.1 is uploading. So if you want to rewatch any video, if you have any questions, they're all up there. All right. Now uh, we turn on the light and we use amazing culture oh, light right there. We use this amazing technology to zoom in. find the slope between these points, and I will get rid of this screen so it's not confusing. Okay. I, like being, I like being extremely loud when unnecessary. Okay. So a nice way to find the slope between two points if they're of reasonable values, meaning not in the like hundreds or something, is to plot them. Uh, I encourage students to do this. So on a test, when I say find the slope between these or find the equation between these and you need to find the slope, I would always encourage you to have a separate sheet of graph paper and just make one really large graph so you can go up to 20s or 30s or whatever you want. And you can literally draw this point and this point on your graph and count. However, there is a formula I will give you also. But you can literally, on a graph, go, okay, I've got a nice piece of graph paper here, and I go to 1, 2, up 1, and over 1, 2, 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, I counted wrong. Okay. And it wants to know the slope between those two points. So if this is at 2, and this is at 3, Right? I know if I draw a right triangle here or a right triangle this direction, it doesn't matter what path you take to get there, as long as you go left and right and up and down and not that. Right? It doesn't matter whether you go from this point to this point or from this point to this point, it will always give you the same slope. So from two to three and from one to four, how do we get from one point to the other? Let's say we start with the left point. How do we get to the right point? I feel like I just broke this pen all over myself. Oh, wow. um, so how do we get from the left point to the right point? Up four over. Yeah, so up four and not over. Right. One. So if we were to write that as a fraction, what would that look like? with signs, right? Up, because it's rise over run. So rise over run would become positive four over positive one, or a slope of four. So problem two, the slope is four. Okay, another way to look at it. Let's say, you know, we like going right to left, because we're just crazy like that. We want to go in this direction. So instead, from that point going down, we went down four, going this way, and then we went left. One, totally fine, totally acceptable. So, we went down four is the rise. The run is left one. Negative four divided by negative one is 
also for it. So it doesn't matter what path you take, as long as you take care not to lose any negatives. Totally acceptable. So you get a slope of 4 either way. Okay. I will give you the formula in a second. That's not what I want to practice right now. I want to practice finding the slope from a graph. <clears throat> so, the next problem looks like this. It gives you two points. And yes, the slope is down there. Okay. I will very slowly cover it up because no one saw that or is still continuing to see it. There we go. It's gone. <clears throat> Alright, so it gives us two points on this graph and it says find the slope between them. Okay. Just like we did before, it doesn't matter whether we go from any, even if there were seven points, you could pick any of the seven points and go from one to the other, or from that other one to the original one. There is no right or wrong which points to take. They will always have the same slope because they're fractions. That's the beauty of it. If I go from here to here, or from here to really far over here, those fractions will reduce to be the same fraction always. Okay, so how would we find the slope from this point to this point? Just use words to tell me how we get there. Up two, so that'd be a positive two for the rise, and right. yeah, right one, two, three, four. So our slope is positive. Well, I'll write it over here. Positive two over positive four, which would reduce to be one half. One half. Well, that means there should be some point in the middle. If I were to go from here up one and right two, and oh, lo and behold, there's another point right there, right? That's the beauty of reducing fractions. And I can keep that pattern going, up one over two, up one right two, I said it, up one right two, down one left two, down one left two, and that pattern repeats and repeats and repeats, and that's what a linear equation does. That same increment over and over with no curvature, no change, all right? Um, just again to show you, if we were to start here and go this way, how could we get there? Down two, so negative two, over. Yeah, so left, I meant over as in division bar. I should best see that over word over is confusing. And then left four, which would be negative four. So negative two divided by negative four, the negatives would cancel, and we'd have two divided by four which reduces to 1 over 2, okay? So don't worry about are you choosing the right points, are you going the right direction. The main thing you need to take really good care about is just like graphing, to the right means positive because the positive values of x are to the right and to the left means negative because the negative x's are over here. And in terms of up and down, up is positive just like the positive y values and down is negative just like the negative y values. And other than that, rise over run. So from one point to another, did I go up or down as positive or negative? Did I go right or left as positive or negative? Write that fraction and simplify. And that's what the slope is. All right, so just to find uh, one more. Okay, let's do a slope right here. This is 13, right? Okay, so right away looking at the slope, I can tell the sign of this slope. What's the sign of this slope? Negative, because from right to left it's going down. So that's a big picture check. At the end of this problem, if my answer says 3 fourths, I know it's wrong, because the answer should be negative. Okay, and that's a big picture check. All right, so. <clears throat> let's do it both ways. So let's start at this point and go to this point. How would we get there from right to left? Or I said right to left, I meant left to right. That was confusing. So from the left side, going to the right side, how would we get there? Down two. Down two, and I heard somebody say negative two, perfect. And then that's the rise over, and what's the run? It's hard to count. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, and is that positive or negative? Positive, because my arrow went down was a negative, right was a positive. So I went down, negative two, right, positive six. So that reduces to be? Negative one third. And we're gonna talk about where to place that negative sign in just a second. <clears throat> now let's do it going the other way, okay? So starting at this point, how do we get backwards to the left? You go up two, so positive two, and then you go negative six. Yeah, left negative six, which reduces to be the same negative one third. So it doesn't matter which direction. So any time, like those first problems, if they give you two points and say find the slope between these two points, yeah, there's a formula that you could use. However, I would say more people would make more mistakes with the negative signs using that formula, which for sure happens, right? On the test, I see things go to that formula, people reverse the spots, things are on top instead of on bottom, things are reverse order, negative signs are just everywhere. So I would just plot these two points on a piece of scratch paper and just count up to right six. Much safer, much less risk for error. Might take you more time. I doubt it. I think it would probably take less time. So I would suggest using that method. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is turn on the lights and show you the formula that you can use. Again, I would suggest not using it, but you know, as a math teacher, I have to give it to you. section before, right here, where I just erased, that said, notice, one half is equal to, all right, also, where to put the negative sign? A big question people have, people get a little too creative with this, okay, here's an example. Is it negative three-fourths? Is it negative three-fourths? Or is it three over negative four? Or is it negative three over negative four? Right? Lots of possibilities. Right? There could even maybe be more, like a negative out front and a negative inside. Okay? The idea being, we already know one half equals positive one over positive two, or negative one over negative two. Whoops, that's, I've said one thing or another. So right away, you know, this is not correct. Okay, this is positive. And that's the, that's the biggest problem. You can't start with one negative and then turn it into two negatives. You can't just add an extra negative sign in there. So if we do have a negative one half, it doesn't matter whether we place it on the top or the bottom. The important part is you don't have two negatives. So that's the exact same as negative one over positive two or positive one over negative two. Because think about it. If you have negative six divided by two, you get negative three. If you have six divided by negative two, you have negative three. So does it matter, does it matter whether the entire number is negative, or just the top is negative, or just the bottom is negative? No. They're all equal to exactly the same thing. Okay. So just as long as there's one negative sign, it doesn't matter if it's on top, bottom, or out front. Okay. In general, I usually keep it out front. Sometimes I put it on top. It's kind of weird to just put it on bottom. All right, so the formula that we can use to find slope
So given two points, we're just going to call the points, and here's where the first difficulty comes. We're going to call them x1, y1, and x2, y2. Okay. Those subscripts have no mathematical meaning, they're just names. Okay. x1 means the first x. x2 means the second x. There's nothing special. I could have just called them a and b, but it would have been more confusing if I would have written a, b, c, d, because then you're like, well, what is d? And when I put it in the formula, was d a y value or an x value? Right? So to avoid the confusion of a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, we say, here's the first x, and this is the second x. That we know, oh, it's the x from the first point. So that's what that little subscript of 1 means. This is point number 1, and that's all the 1 means. This is point number 2, and that's all the 2 means. Just a name. That's the first part where people stumble. Um, and they mix those up a lot. Where you should plug in Y2, they plug in Y1, or they plug in X2 or X1, and they just substitute the wrong things in. Okay? If you can keep track of that and keep track of your negatives, then the formula is going to work for you. Okay? And the formula is real simple, logical too. It's M, which stands for the slope. I tried to look up Y once, and it was just a rabbit hole. It's you know traced back to some French book that used some French word around the turn of the century, and then everybody was like, ah, the book before me did it, so I'm just going to do it. I think the word wasn't even. I don't even think it was a literal M for slope. And there's lots of stories. It was because of this thing or this person, but there's no good reason. Okay, real easy. I mean, think about it. In what's the rise? Simple, how much did my points change from this y value to this y value, and how do we find the difference in y values? Right? What's difference mean in math? We subtract. We literally say, how, what was the change in y? So y2 minus y1. Or the change in y, aka the rise. Right? So here's our formula. And then over the run, or in other words, how much did x change from here to here? How far did we go from here to here? So x2 minus x1. So this is the formula. Okay. I would suggest not using it. But if you can keep track of which is which and your negatives, go for it. Okay. So it's really just the change in y over the change in x, aka rise over run. I think. Everybody here would be better off just plotting their points on a graph. Okay. Questions so far? Yeah. It's good. It's good. Okay. So that's pretty much it about the basics of slope. Okay. Now I'm going to get into some more specifics about how to use this and kind of exceptions. So. The first exception is that same exception from 3.2 that's going to come up over and over, right? What about horizontal and vertical lines? Really straightforward, right? You find the slope the same way you would find the slope of anything else. Okay, so let's look at horizontal first. Again, a big part of math is seeing horizontal line and not thinking I'm going to use a new strategy, a new plan, totally make up new rules, you follow the exact same steps, the exact same process, right? So how do we find the slope, right? So let's look at a horizontal line. Let's pick any two points on this line. Okay, so the slope equals rise over run. What was the rise from one of those points to the other one? Right, how much 
How much did we go up between this point and that point? We're down. Zero. Yeah, zero. That's easy. Okay, rise is zero. And the run is, well, it depends on where you pick the point. Doesn't matter, right? The run is some number. Let's say, let's say for example, this was zero com oh, two comma zero, and this was five comma zero. It doesn't matter. Right. So how far did we go over? Five. Three. But yeah, it's because I wrote zero and then I wrote over it. But yeah, it would be, yeah. And so we go over three. And so what zero divided by three is? Zero. Yeah. So slope is zero. Right? But we found it the exact same way. No special circumstances at all. Okay? Or you could have used the formula. Right? So the way we would use the formula, if this was our x1, y1, x2, y2, is we would go n equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we'd go 0 minus uh, 0 over yeah, 5 minus, there was 2 originally, I just wrote over it back, so that was 2. And so you get 0 over 3 is 0, you get the same thing. Okay. The problem is, is people accidentally write the x's on top, or they accidentally put this one and then that one, and then they switch the order, so you get lots of room for it. Okay, straightforward. And then we do the same thing with vertical. Okay, so here's the vertical line. Same thing, let's find the slope of an example. Here's any old example of vertical line. Nothing special, let's say this point is 4 comma 6, and this point is um, 4 comma negative 1. Alright, so rise over run would be, we can count because it's already on the graph. So, what would be the rise here? So from negative 1 to 0, we go 1, and then from 0 to 6, we go 6 more, so total of, like, so 1, and then 6 more, so total of 7. So we go up 7, and then how far did we go right or left, from 4 to 4? Zero, right? So what's the slope of this line? Yeah, undefined. That's it. We found it the same exact way. We put it on graph and we count it. The only thing we had to remember is O over K is OK and N over O is no. Okay. Easy way to remember. Or zero because I could share no houses with all of you. I could share no yachts with all of you. All right. So. This is undefined. So a vertical line has an undefined slope. We will come back to why that is. Uh, the reason, uh, just to tell you, is it's not a function. It's kind of a broken machine in math, and that's why this will continue to be our exception. However, when we introduce y equals mx plus b format, horizontal lines are totally normal, totally okay. They just have a slope of zero. We have a normal equation for them. Everything's happy. This is actually the one exception, and that's because this is not a function. And in math, we generally don't talk about things that aren't functions because they're not very useful mm -hmm. as compared with functions. Mm -hmm. All right? So that's our first big exception. And then we got one other one. Okay? I wouldn't say necessarily exception. But overall, the picture really quick is this is what an overall picture would look like if I were to draw a coordinate axis and draw a bunch of lines. Okay. A line going this direction. Okay. I'm going to center them all through this point because everybody always centers them through the origin. That's boring. So this line would have a slope of, and I'm just going to write m equals zero. Zero. Right? It's horizontal. Slope is zero. Right? A slope like this might have like m equals one half. A slope like this might be m equals one. A slope like this would be more like m equals four. Okay, and then all of those mirror image in the negative direction. So here's m equals negative one half. Here's m equals negative one. 
appears, m equals negative, maybe that's that two or a three. And then lastly, a vertical line would be m is undefined. So that's a nice quick picture of ballpark slopes. One means up one over one, up one over one. That's the perfect diagonal. Negative one, perfect diagonal. A slope of like 10 is super steep. Up 10 for over one, I mean, that's near vertical. So all the numbers you normally think about in everyday life, like one to 100, all basically look the same. They all look like this in terms of our picture, because we don't even usually fit 10 on a graph. So it doesn't matter whether it goes up and over 10 or up and over 11, they're really close. So for the most part with graphs, we're gonna be dealing with numbers around one. So like three quarters, five halves, two sixths, two sevenths, three eighths, you know, numbers between zero and two, for the most part, are really common. Okay. All right, so the last idea is parallel and perpendicular. Okay, so parallel lines, it's like, what do I do with a pen that doesn't work? I just put it right back where I'm going to grab it again. That's forward thinking. All right, so parallel lines. Ooh, ooh, ooh that's a good one. Right? One thing to remember, what can you think about? The slopes of parallel lines. If you've got two lines that are parallel, what do you imagine about their slopes? Yeah. yeah, same rise and the same run because they're going in the same direction, right? If they had all veered from that plan and went up more than the other or down more than the other, then their paths would cross. So parallel lines have the same slope. Finally, perpendicular, and this is uh, the harder one to memorize, but I'll just really quickly tell you why, because I always I like to think about why. This one took me a second to figure out why. Peculiar. Okay, so perpendicular line, um, and just in case you don't know what the definition of parallel lines is, uh, lines are parallel. two lines that never intersect. I, I like math jokes. I saw, I saw a funny picture on the internet. So all the funny pictures are. And uh, it was, it was uh, how sad in math that, you know, parallel lines, they have so much in common, and yet they go on forever and ever, and they never meet. And I was like, but is that more sad or less sad than any two other lines, where they only meet once, and then forever and ever after that, they grow further and further and further apart. And I was like, huh, oh, now I'm just sad. Um, <laughs> okay, so two lines are perpendicular if they meet in a 90 degree angle. So perpendicular lines meet at a 90 degree angle, aka a right angle, so they look like that, 90 degrees. The slopes of perpendicular lines are, and I'm going to write the vocabulary words, but then I'll tell you what they mean, are opposite reciprocals. So opposite and reciprocals. So opposite means opposite positive negative sign. And then reciprocal means um, vertically flipped over for action.
So for this one, like three would become negative three, and for this one, two thirds would become three halves. So that's what I mean by opposite. That's what I mean by reciprocal. So a uh, quick example of this. Line one has slope equal to three quarters. Perpendicular line is what slope? Particular line has. And what would the slope of the second line be? Slope equals? That's part of it. Negative. Negative. You have to switch the sign and okay. flip it. So we flip the three fourths to be four thirds, and we put a negative sign. And again, it doesn't matter where we write it. I like to write it out front. Okay. But you flip it over vertically, and you switch the sign. Another example. Okay. Line one has slope equal to negative two. Okay, so what would be the perpendicular slope to negative two? Say it again. One half. Exactly. So we would turn this into negative two over one because every whole number, every integer can be written as a fraction. And so same thing. We switch the sign from negative to positive, and 2 over 1 becomes 1 over 2. So this becomes positive 1 half. Okay, and that's where the notes will end. But really quickly, I just want to tell you why. I mean, that seems like such an arbitrary rule. Just switch the sign and flip it over. Like, why do mathematicians do this to us? That's just mean. But there's a really interesting reason why I was thinking about it. I was like, why is that? Why is that? And the reason is, if you wanted to find what a perpendicular slope is, I mean, just for the while, you don't need to write this. It's just, I was curious. This isn't going to come up. But if I took a slope, let's say the first slope, which is 3 fourths, that means go up 3 and over 4, right? OK, so that's a nice direction. If I want to guarantee myself that I'm going 90 degrees perpendicular to that, what I could do at the start is say, okay, instead of starting right where I am and going that direction and following a set of instructions and ending up over there, what I'm going to do is right at the beginning, I'm going to turn exactly 90 degrees to the side and follow the exact same set of instructions. So instead of heading over that way, instead of going you know, forward and that way, I'm going to follow the exact same set of directions going this way. And I know these are 90 degrees apart because I physically turned my body 90 degrees from here to here. So wherever I'm pointing, turn 90 degrees, that's obviously 90 degrees from there because I physically turn 90 degrees. So instead of going forward 3 and hanging a right turn 4, I'm going to turn 90 degrees and go 3 over, hang a right turn, and go 4. Or, who cares, I could have turned 90 degrees to the left. So I could have gone this way. I could have gone, okay, I'm going to start walking 3 in this direction, and I'm going to hang a right turn, and go 4. And look what we get. For both of those, the slope is down 4, and right 3. So a slope of negative 4 thirds. Sure enough, that's the perfect good slope. So that's one way I thought about it. I was like, that's pretty cool. I've never, yeah, never had anybody ever point out why. So that's where we'll stop. So you have now 45 minutes to work on homework for this. If you have questions about the test, questions about this, ask. Use this time. Don't take this time to go outside and waste time. So woo, exercise the brain. I'll come answer it. Good question. I'll go to you. Okay. Okay, so let's do one example really quick. Uh, because I had uh, multiple students ask about these. So this example will be from later in the section where it says, is the line between these two points parallel, perpendicular, or neither through these other two points? So here's problem 24. They write it like this. 2 comma 4 and 6 comma 1, semicolon. 
negative 3 comma 1 and 1 whoops, comma negative 2. Okay, so reading the directions word for word, determine whether the distinct lines through each pair of points are parallel. So here's line number 1. Here's line number 2 separated completely by a semicolon, totally separate piece of information, and they want to know if they're parallel. So, what do we do? Yeah, we it. But I mean, but what's the bigger picture of after we graph it? Exactly. We're not just going to look at it and be like, yeah, they look parallel, because they could be really similar. You know, you could have like you know, six sevenths and like six eighths or something where they look close. I mean, it's off by just a little smidgen. So we're not just going to eyeball it, right? We don't do that in math. What we're going to do is compare the slopes. So yeah, I would graph it to find the slopes, but don't graph it to look at the picture. That's not what we care about, okay? So on a graph, just for a scratch paper. So the graph is just scratch paper. And I wish I had an awesome graph up here. Oh, it would take too long now. That's what I should have done. I could have just not put the whiteboard up, and I could have just projected it onto this whiteboard and drawn on it with graph paper up there. Now I got it. Next week, that's what we're doing. All right, so here's my graph. We go over one, two, three, four, five, six, up one. This is line one, okay? And then two, comma, four. So over two, up one, two, three, four. So, I'm going from 2 to 6, and I'm going from 1 to 4, so what's my slope of line 1? 4, 3. Well, how did you get that? First of all, I know it's wrong because looking at this big picture, four, it's, it's got to be just big picture. The slope is negative. 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 So I know it's going to be negative. So I know it can't be just 4, 3, but let's see. So, what's, so what do we do? We go... Down four. Down from four to one. Down three. Ha, I can't count. There we go. See? There we go. So down three. That's why I write the numbers, because I, I can't do the counting. So yeah, so you said four. Yeah, okay. So we go down three and then right from two to six. Right four. Yeah. And so what's that slope gonna be? Negative three over four. Negative three over four. Exactly. So n equals negative 3 over 4 for that one. Alright, now let's draw line number 2. I'm just going to erase that really quick. Okay, so line 2 says negative 1, 2, 3, 1. And uh, 1, negative 2. So over 1, down 1, 2. Okay, so we're at negative 2. We're going up to 1. We're at negative 3 and we're going to 1. So, how much did we go down? 3. Yeah, from 1 to 0 to negative 1 to negative 2 is down negative 3. And then we went over. 4, four 2. Yeah, 1, 2, 3 to get to 0. One more, so we went over positive 4. So the slope for this one is? Same. Yeah, negative 3 over 4. So the answer to our question is? Yes, the slope. But it's asking, are they parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Parallel. Per per and you answer parallel. Yeah, exactly. And so what you're looking for each time is, are they parallel, or are they perpendicular, or are they not? But the question is really saying, find the slope. Except instead of finding the slope of 1, soften in math, if you can do it once, we'll say do it twice, do it three times, do it ten times. So find two slopes at the same time, and then just see, are they the same, or are they different? So we have 42 minutes. So to work on this, ask questions. You can work on test corrections, ask questions. But practice it. And yeah, I'm here. Otherwise, for anybody I don't see, have a have a good weekend.